MidiSequencer.net. This is a simple MIDI sequencer online that's free that you can use to record a chord progression or other interesting musical ideas. So let's suppose you wanted to record this chord progression right here. This is an example of one of those axis progressions in the key of F major. I'll play these chords for you. One, five, six minor, four, and so on. Uh, and then it repeats again. So there are a couple of different ways of recording that progression on this sequencer. Let me first just show you what you're, explain what you're seeing. Uh, so this x-axis here shows time, um, and then the y-axis shows uh, will show pitches up and down. And you might notice that there are these numbers here. Those are measures. So this is measure one, this is measure two, this is measure three, this is measure four. Uh, and the default time signature is four four. So let me zoom in for a second on one measure. Here is one measure. Uh, from here to here, and you'll see that these darker lines are dividing the measure into four uh, uh, tactus uh, subdivisions, and then each of those tactus is, is divided into four. Those are each of those little boxes right there. Okay, so you can you know write basically up to sixteenth note subdivisions in this MIDI sequencer. Okay, and there uh, and then uh, to show pitch, what you see over here is what looks like a piano keyboard turned sideways, and this shows different notes. So this is C four right here. This is a C sharp, D, D sharp, E, F, and so forth. All right, uh, and there are two different ways of entering notes. The first you can do if you have a, um, a MIDI enabled instrument like an electronic keyboard and you have a MIDI connection to your computer. And if that's the case, uh, you can just click on this record button and it will input whatever you play uh, using MIDI. So I'll show you how to do that. Um, that's the metronome. I'm going to click that so it's white. That means it's on. That means the metronome will give a click when I, uh, when I play. And then um, it's going to click for four beats and then I'll play my progression. Here we go. And so on. Okay, so you see it uh, translated whatever I played into these lines, and these lines are showing the note, and then how, do, how long those notes last, and so forth. Looks like I made a little mistake there, so I'll delete that note, and so forth. So that is one way of, um, of, uh, uh, of entering in information. The other way of entering in information is to use this little button right here, or you actually just draw the notes on this little um, MIDI screen. It looks kind, of like a, looks kind of like a piano roll. So let me show you how that works. I'm going to click on this right here to draw, and let's enter in our first chord. So our first chord has F in the bass, and then the upper voices are C, F, and A. So I'll put on my bass note. It's going to be this right here. All right. And then I'll put on a C, and then an F, and then here's my A right there. All right, let's play it. Okay, uh, and you might notice that's a little too short, right? Uh, so the, the way you can make these notes longer, oh, by the way, is first um, uh, you can zoom in by pressing these two buttons right here. You know, that's zoom out, that's zoom in. Let me zoom in. I'm gonna use this, I'm gonna use this to scroll back. And according to this, uh, uh, according to this music notation, these should last for a whole measure. So let's make all of these notes last for a measure. Here's how you do that. I'm going to click on this, and that's what you, what you use to select notes. I'm going to select those notes, and then first of all, I could move them around if I wanted, like this. You know, and like so. I can move them down. Uh, and then if you go to the end of a note, you see that the uh, mouse turns into this double-headed arrow. If you do that, you can make those notes longer. And now I've made those notes last for an entire measure. There we go. Okay. Uh, now let's write in the next rest of the chord. So my next chord has C in the bass, and then C, E, and G. And I'll use this draw tool again and mark in those notes. One nice thing about this tool is that once you set a particular note length, uh, whoops, wrong note. Uh, there you see um, uh, I, I I made the wrong note. Um, it was supposed to be C, but I did C sharp instead. So I'll take this 
and drag it down so it becomes C. Okay, uh, and once you set a particular note duration, uh, then when you write a new note, um, the next note will be the same duration. Uh, this E should go down to G, and then this A should go down to G. I'm sorry, the F goes down to E, the A goes down to G. All right, next I need a D minor chord. That's D in the bass, and then D, F, A. All right, so this C down here goes up to D. This C goes up to D. This E goes up to F and this G goes up to A. Oh, and I made a mistake again. I meant to say A, but I did G sharp instead. Uh, so I'm gonna take this, and you see when I go over the note, it turns into a little finger. I'm gonna click on it and move it up. Now it's the correct note. And then we need a B flat major chord that's B flat in the bass, then D, F, and B flat. So we'll have a go to the next measure. I'm scrolling over here. I'll have a D flat on the bass, that's the same as A sharp, that's right there. Okay, and then that D stays the same, that F stays the same, and then this A should go up by a half step to B flat. It writes, as, it writes it as A sharp, but A sharp and B flat are the same. Let me zoom out. Okay, and let's hear this whole progression. Um, this BPM is an indication of the tempo, that's how many beats per minute it is. Uh, this is right now 110 beats per minute. Let's make it a little faster. How about 124? I'll press enter. Oops. And I'll get rid of that. And you can, I'm going to press this uh, orange triangle here to play. And it'll play this progression, and what you see is that um, but by default it'll just loop it. In other words, when it, goes to the, when it goes to the end of the progression, it'll play it again. Here's what it sounds like. We go. Now I will show you how to change a sound if that's something you want to do. So you see here uh, this instrument says electric piano. If I wanted to add something else, you know, I could add a music box. All right. And oh, let me click on the draw. Let's get rid of that. Something like that. I'll get rid of that. Okay. Another way you can change a sound is by using the select key and then selecting the notes whose sound you want to change and then you select a different instrument. So let's try something else. Let's try... how about... Where are you? Let's try an 8-bit sine tone. Okay. Now I've changed it. That's interesting. It's a little too loud for me, so I'm going to keep those same notes selected, and I'm going to click. I'm going to click on these options for. Oh, here we go for the eight-bit sign. Here I'm going to turn this volume down just a little bit. Okay, uh, you don't have to to be that fussy in your in your work, but you know, just in case you want to adjust things. All right, and now I'm just worried about that piano part overpowering that kind of purer sign tone. So let's do something a little more subdued for the uh, bass line. Um, how about a synth pluck? All right, let's try it now. Okay, there we go. All right, uh, and that's good. And let me show you one more thing. Suppose I like this, but it's too high. Okay, it's kind of high. It gets kind of grating when you listen to it again and again. Uh, so suppose now I want to transpose it down. To do that, I'm going to select everything, and then to transpose it, I can just drag it up and down, uh, like so. Uh, so let's take it down a whole octave. Right now, this is F4, so I'll take it down to this F over there. Now let's hear it. Um, and there you go. One more thing. Uh, you notice here that I wrote this progression out twice rather than uh, once. 
Um, and in this particular case, it doesn't matter because the progression loops anyway. But suppose you wanted to write it out twice, you know, because you wanted to vary things the second time. Well, uh, one easy way of doing that is to copy and paste. So um, I'm still on select. I'm going to select this whole thing here. I'm going to press Command C for copy, and then I'm going to press Command V for paste, just like Microsoft Word. Boom. Let's try that again. Okay, 16 notes pasted. Drag them to change their position. So basically, they're pasted on top of the original note, and so to change their position, you just hold them and move them over to where you want to start, which is right there. And now this lasts for eight measures. and so on, okay? And that's basically all you need to do if you want to get extra fancy and add, you know, drum parts or other weird, st weird stuff, you can go to town. So what, what else do we have? We have, um, uh, we have an 808 drum kit sound, that'll be fun. Let's do some groovy hi-hats here. Oh, need to select this. There we go. Let's add a nice kick drum. Oops, move that over there. Okay, let's add a hand clap. Yeah, let's do that one. Um, and let's turn this down a little bit. It's a little overpowering. And let's see, let's add like a little fill at the end. Not that. Um, how about some toms? Okay, something like that. Slow time two. No. All right. Okay, so there's my little drum part. Okay. Um, and then I can do the same thing with the drum part that I did with the uh, uh, with the other parts. I can just copy and paste it if I want, if I want that to repeat. So I'll select that. Let's try that again. Select that drum part. Copy, paste, and copy paste and copy paste and copy paste and copy paste copy paste drag it over and copy paste all right um and then if i want i can add like a fill or something at the end so let's see let's do some mid times for the fill uh sorry go back to here to the draw And then I'll add like a symbol at the very end. Uh, where's my 808 symbol? Right here. Okay, now let's try it. I'm gonna zoom out. So now I've added the chords, I've added the bass line. Oh, and I've added these upper note voices here. Let's hear it. Okay, the drum gets too loud. I'm gonna turn that down. down. Let's try that again. And so on. Okay, so that is how you create a chord progression using this online sequencer. Uh, play around with it and just remember your basic controls. You have the keyboard here, uh, you have time here, you can draw notes with this draw button, you can select with this, and then you can do things like copy, paste, and cut. Um, you can also press the delete key if you need to delete a note. Have fun and uh, ask a classmate or email me if you have questions.